the framer here welcome to my podcast this is episode 26 of the one with Paige the framer thank you so much for joining me if you are brand new for me to me you can find me as Paige the framer on all the social medias if you would like to follow on here with me and if you'd like to join our community community find one of those social medias to plug into I linked everything down below I do have a group for this podcast on Ravelry. It is called Friends of Frame and Fiber. Uh, and I am starting to become a little bit more active there. So please join me there as well. So let's get this show started because I need this to be fast because I have a camping trip to get to. <laughs> All right. So next week I am not next week tomorrow. I'm leaving tomorrow to go on a trip to Lake George with Paul Miller. We're visiting family and we're taking a few nights to escape into the woods and just relax and hike and knit, hang out in the woods, quiet time. It's going to be great. So I leave tomorrow. Um, so next week's podcast will probably be more of a, actually I won't have a podcast next week. We'll probably skip it and do the following week. So next week you'll see all kinds of Lake George footage. So that'll be fun. Um, August 9th, which will be two weeks away. Yeah, two weeks, three weeks away, is our next virtual knit night. So if you are interested in joining with us, mark your calendar. August 9th at 7 p.m. I use zoom.us to host the virtual knit night and you can join the VKN with Paige the Framer on Facebook. That is where I will post the meeting code. So please join us. Also, I am going to be vending at the New Jersey Sheep and Wool Festival with my picture frames with some of the indie dyed yarn here. I just spoke with Sue of Legacy Knits today and I will be hosting a trunk show for Legacy Knits at the Sheep Show. So if you're in New Jersey, September 8th and 9th, stop by my booth. I would tell you what number it is, but I don't know it. <laughs> I didn't write it down. <laughs> I'll fill you in next time. <laughs> or maybe I'll post it below. Anyway, sorry about that. <laughs> Come visit me. That's what I'm trying to tell you to do. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything that I have to, that's everything coming up that I need you to, to know about. Um, I'll be bringing some of these frames with me as well. You guys have seen my fabric wrapped mats. I just got a big order in from Spoonflower, so I'll be wrapping some more mats and some pretty fabrics other than the knitted fabrics that I have from Mrs. Brown. This is pictures. This is another type of photo frame that I do. And it's not really knitty fiber related, but it's beach related and that's where I'm from. So I thought this would be kind of fun to bring and they're just pretty. I love them. So I'll be bringing those. All kinds of fun things will be happening in the next few weeks. I will just show you some of the newer products I'm going to be making. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh. Okay. So I'm sorry, I'm going super fast in this one. I do apologize if I'm a crazy person and if this is your first time, I'm not generally this wound up. <laughs> Shall we move on to some knitting? I think that's probably what we should move on to. So, should we start with FOs? Oh my gosh, there is a crochet pattern recent release recently released by my friend Liz who is one half of the duo behind the podcast what am I saying that Liz and her sister Leanne host the um, 
cocktail uh, cocktail hour at the coop podcast they upload once a week and talk about their knitting and show you amazing footage of their alpaca farm in wall township new jersey and they're a riot they're so much fun you should really check them out leah knits and liz crochets liz they do all more than that but for now that's that's all you need to know for now <laughs> so liz just released a pattern um they talked she talked about this pattern a couple weeks ago uh leanne had knitted the farmhouse shawl i forget who that's by but it was a pretty popular pattern on the ravelry liz liked it but she crochets and so she wrote this pattern this is the farm girl shawl and you can follow them on instagram as arrow acres farm yarn that is their instagram handle and you can find out more information about this pattern there or their website which is linked below so this is my finished object shall i put it on for you it doesn't really match my my shirt here does it but uh so these buttons here oh my gosh isn't that so pretty uh this is these buttons are made by natalie of remembrance pottery she is if you're new to our knitting community she is our favorite potter, <laughs> my favorite potter, and oh my gosh, look how cute that is. So yeah, these are Natalie's buttons. I do sell them here at my frame shop, at my yarn shop, at Frame and Fiber, but Natalie also sells on line too, so you can check out remembrancespottery.com, I believe is her. I'll link below. I'm linking everything below because I didn't write really good show notes uh, so this is the farm girl shawl by Liz Alvino I love it so it calls for 400 yards of worsted weight yarn but I have lots and lots of indie dyed fingering weight yarn and when you hold fingering weight yarn double you get worsted weight something comparable to worsted weight weight so I used three colors, I held them double, and I did a marled, a marled stripe pattern, I guess, is what I did. The pattern is really open for interpretation as far as picking out your color, and it looks good in so many different ways. Liz has made three of them, and they're really beautiful. So this is three colors, but you see I have one, two, three, four, and five. I've got five stripes. So I. I marled them together and holding them two together. So I've got Backyard Fiberworks, which is where I started. This is their, uh, this is Backyard Fiberworks, American Wool, the American Wool. It's a Cormo, I forget when it was from, 2016 maybe, Cormo, uh, in the pollen colorway. And then, so it's held double. And then I drop one of the strands and pick up one of the, these and makes this marled section and that is Lolo did it in her pretty little zombies colorway and then there it is again and then we've got it mixed the pretty little zombies mixed in with another Lolo did it this one is called summer nights summer nights so the Backyard Fiberwork is a non-superwash Cormo, 100% Cormo. And then the, the Lolo did it, both of these is, I forget the name of the base, it's the MCN base, um, and it's superwash. So they're a little bit different in texture, but this is so, there's not much of it. I only used a mini, so that's it too, just so you know. I used 400 and, oh, I used two full skeins of fingering weight and one mini. That's what this works out to. So it's a little bit more yarn than, one, than what Liz used in her pattern, um, but it still works out great. And then I added the fringe. Love, 
love this if you guys crochet it's so fast and fun and I highly recommend it it's really cool too she does this border oh, oh my gosh that's fun you can see me through it <laughs> it's focusing on my eyeballs all right let's get it to not focus on my eyeballs there we go <laughs> so you can see that this is the top edge and that is a really pretty edge but it also works as your buttonhole so pretty clever Liz pretty clever and super simple and I will be making tons of these I crocheted this up from start to finish meaning adding the tassel or the fringe and the buttons and ripping back because I had knitted from here or knitted crocheted from here to about here and didn't like because I was striping I didn't like the stripe so I ripped it back so all of that and it took me about six hours to make that's not so bad as in like not so bad I'll be making tons of these for Christmas presents <laughs> uh, so I have my next colors picked out for the next farm girl shawl that I'm going to be making so I just thought I'd share that with you it's living in my Daisy Lane design. This is her Luke bag. She did a whole series of bags based on the Gilmore Girls. Uh, Legacy Fiber Arts had done their Men of Stars Hollow line and then Allison was inspired and she made a bunch of bags to go with them and so I bought the Luke bag. So this is what I've decided to use for the next one. I'm using Hedgehog in what's the base the sock yarn it is a uh, 90 merino 10 nylon so let me turn this this way so you can see the pretty colors so that's what I'm using for the next one and then I'm throwing in a mini like I did with the other one and it's this mini it's a one-of-a-kind mini that um, I got from Legacy Fiber Arts, which I think works so great with these colors. So this will be the next shawl. Um, yeah, I probably will work on this when we're in the woods. So that's my finished object. This is my soon to be next whip. That's it for finished objects. Uh, I pretty much worked on that and worked on my sweater, which I'm going to show you now. Uh, that was pretty much the only fibery craftiness I did this week because I have been busy at work trying to get ready to leave for our vacation. So in my fat squirrel bag, this is my sweater's quantity bag that I bought from her at Needles up Rhinebeck which needles up right back I'm excited for it are you guys excited it's gonna be so much fun I already know what I want to get <laughs> of course I do all right so here is my work in progress I am continuing knitting on my ready for fall pullover by Isabel Kramer I am using Green Mountain Spinnery the comfort cotton or cotton comfort let's see I always forget which word comes first cotton comfort so it's a DK weight yarn it is 80% uh, no 20% yeah 80% fine wool and 20% organic cotton it is very yummy toothy delicious rusticy yarn and I'm loving it and it's coming out beautifully uh, my fiber share partner from last, not this most recent trade, but the one before had sent me some try-on tubing. So I've been trying this on and it fits so perfect. I mean, perfect. I'm really, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that I, every time I make a sweater, knock on wood, knock on wood, I swatch and when I swatch I kind of what's the word I obsess over the swatching like oh is it right oh is it perfect oh is it this until I'm sure and I'm telling you when you swatch and you really make sure you're getting engaged 
the numbers work. I mean, granted, this is, I'm not like, I'm not a sweater guru by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not, I wouldn't even consider myself an experienced sweater knitter. I just knit sweaters. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, I'm excited to get to the color work. I have, I think the last time I was talking with you guys, I was a couple inches down from the arm. So I've knit about six inches under the arm. I'm about eight to, t I'm eight or nine inches through and I have to get down to 11 inches from the underarm and then start the color work. And that's gonna be fun. I think the idea of doing color work at the bottom makes me happy because the shaping of the sweater is fun because there's always something to pay attention to and to do and I like that and then you get the break of the stockinette working your way down and I feel like right when I right when I think this could feel like a slog I'll start doing the color work so that is fun I did forget to bring one whip with me it is my mittens um, that I'm entering into the summer mitten along hosted by Denise, the host of the Earth Tones Girl podcast and Rachel of the Treehouse Knits podcast. Um, so I will get those next time for you guys to see them because color work mittens make me so happy. <laughs> All right, that's it for the knitting that, or the knitting and crocheting that I have done this week. Um, I talked to you about my fabric wrap mats. I'm not going to show them to you this time, which is probably dumb, but I'm so bummed. Not bummed, but I made a ton of them this week and I went to put them all together and I realized I forgot to order the easel backs. You know, the, I break everything. The little stands to hold them up, the easel backs. I forgot to order them, so I couldn't finish. I couldn't finish what I started because I had to wait for them. So that's how I roll. All right, last but not least, I wanted to share with you a couple more samples that I've received from some of you great and gracious and amazing knitters out there. So as always, I thank you guys so much for your love and support of me and my business and this podcast and my little community that I'm building over here. I really, I just appreciate it so much. And I have two samples that a couple of you have knit for me. This is, this first one is the Ricky hat. I think I'm saying that correct, Ricky hat, uh, by Sarah Young. This is knit in the Cascade 220. And it's funny, I have a bunch of samples that I knit out of my like favorite yarns out and I, you know, newer yarns or indie dyed and that kind of stuff because they're exciting and they're beautiful, but I've kind of neglected my Cascade yarns. So I wanted to get a few things knit in these yarns. So let me show you the Ricky hat which is a free pattern on Ravelry, and I'm sure most of you have seen this pattern and know about this pattern. Um, I will be putting pom-poms on all of these hats, but this was made by Michelle, who is, what is her name? She's Mish Yarn 2 on Ravelry. And she knit this for me, and it is an absolute lovely knit and a beautiful hat. So, slouchy goodness, ooh, this really, that holds my bun nice. It's actually, I need to make one of these for me. That's cute, thank you, Michelle. Yeah, so, um, when I get back from my trip, I really need to get working on some of my display ideas for the fall because I have some styrofoam heads that I wanna paper mache so that I can show off these hats that you guys have been knitting for samples for the shop. And then also I've requested a lot of cowls and I wanna put them around the heads too. I think it would be a really cute uh, fall kind of display. So the Ricky hat, Cascade 220, uh, absolutely love it. Michelle, you're amazing, thank you. Okay, I love this hat but I will be gushing over this next project because it's the yarn. It's always the yarn. <laughs> so this was, oh my gosh, you guys. 
I'm a spoiled brat. Amazing. Okay, so Julie Bray, who is Jewel Bray on Ravelry and Instagram, has knit the doo-wop shawl for me. Doo-wop shawl by Lisa Hans. I think last week I mentioned what a big fan I am of Elizabeth Smith. I realize I'm a huge fan of Lisa Hans as well because everything she writes is beautiful. So the doo-wop shawl. Oh my gosh. Guys, seriously. Look at that. Do you see this beautiful shawl? Knit by the lovely Julie. Julie, you are so kind to spend time on this shawl for me. Uh, it's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Please check out Lisa Hans patterns. I have so many of them up here on the wall. She's so wonderful. Her shawls are just super fun. Uh, this is a mosaic knit shawl. You guys have heard me say how much I'm a big fan of mosaic knitting. I should take the hat off. I'm too hot. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take that off. Oh gosh, let me put this back on. <laughs> so, okay, so I had sent um, Julie, uh, I forget how many skeins this took. I think I sent her three skeins of Malabrigo Arroyo, which is their sport weight. Um, I don't think it's super wash. I think it's, no, it. Anyway, it's Arroyo, sport weight, Malabrigo, kettle dyed, gorgeous. So this is the newest shawl pattern, knit by a lovely viewer, thank you so much. Look at her beautiful tassels. Wait, let me hide my face so you can see her beautiful tassel. Look at the beautiful stitches. Holy mackerel, my fingers don't wanna work. Isn't that gorgeous? And that Healy turquoise color. Um, just beautiful. Gorgeous. Thank you, Julie. So yeah, thank you guys so very much for all that you do to help me here at the shop. It's really, I mean, you guys know how long it takes to knit something. <laughs> um, because we all knit. But with this place, um, you know, needing to sell yarn, the, it, the only way I can sell the yarn is through the different samples. People just, and I don't blame them. I mean, I, you, it's so lovely to see it worked up and to see the pattern in person and to see the yarn the way it's going to feel and garter and stockinette. So every time one of you helps me, I really appreciate it. And it just makes my life feel like I can breathe a little bit easier because there are so many patterns also to keep up with. There's there's new, 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 new. And that's kind of hard to do. And unfortunately, I definitely am a yarn shop, but as far as like a knit shop, I, don't, I can't knit during the day because I need to get picture framing done and all of that stuff. So I don't really have much time for knitting. Um, so yeah, you guys have really been helpful and thank you so much. All right, should I be done gushing? Do I sound like I'm repeating myself? I apologize. <laughs> I hope this is a short one. I hope that I can edit this down and that you guys will have a quick little visit with me. Next week, I will take my camera with me into the woods and hopefully get some great shots of yarn in the wild. <laughs> anyway, I hope you have a beautiful week and I will see you next time. Bye. Oh my gosh, it's a shit show over here. <laughs>